Uh, we thought the best thing to do would be to bring together two of New Zealand's most prominent political commentators to thrash out the final debate for you, for your vote, because you will be going out there in five days' time, or most of you will. From the left, Sunday Star Times columnist, part-time folk singer, people's hero and tree hugger, comrade Chris Trotter, <laughs> and then his absolute diametrically opposed opposite, <laughs> on the right, Sunday Star Times columnist, National Party Svengali, Winston Peters BFF, or should that be BFCF, uh, <laughs> from the House of Slytherin, the Machiavellian Matthew Hooten. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you both on the show. <laughs> Together, you. keep your hands apart. <laughs> Try to refrain from using the C word. All right. <laughs> Chris, I'm going to start with you. How can anyone take Helen Clark's claim that this election is about trust seriously? She's moved around on the date she first found out about Winston's donation. She's been tainted by her position with Winston. And all this has allowed a petty narrative of speeding limos, fake paintings to become evidence of treason on Matthew's talkback radio show. <laughs> so what? how can she say this is about trust? Well, I think particularly after tonight, the trust uh, theme is, is going to uh, resonate even more uh, loudly in the ears of the voters. I mean, I think Helen uh, has uh, been elected several times now since some of those uh, incidents that you mentioned. I don't think people have held Paintergate or, or the, uh, the trip uh, across the Canterbury Plains against her necessarily. Uh, and I think... You know, why she has raised the issue of trust is very clear. It's because uh, at one point, uh, even John Key was in favour of the Iraq war, and then suddenly he says it was a bad idea, and John Key was calling uh, Kiwi Saver communism by stealth, and now it's a good idea. And, I mean, these flip-flops uh, are not really conducive of trust. So she's probably, you know, chosen the issue uh, that is... Uh, going to be the one on which this uh, election turns. People are going to come down to the wire. They're in the middle of an economic crisis, a global economic crisis, and they're going to say, should we really change horses in midstream when the river is rising? And I think they're going to say no. Matthew, what do you think about this? Because it seems to me the thing I have to ask, I've been making a point of asking everybody I can who you're going to vote for and what do you think. And a lot of them, especially the young people, say, I just can't trust Keith. Do you think that that's working, or do you think that, that why do you think that well, it doesn't look like it's working when you look at the polls? Whether um, the events of you know, the last few hours are going to change that is, is debatable. It didn't seem like the you know, a capital offence by Bill English um, tonight. I think when Helen Clark said she was going to make the election about trust, it seemed a little bit weird at the time because you know, after the pledge card scandal, the Electoral Finance Act, all those sort of things, people sort of thought, you know, it's pretty odd to run on trust with that record. I think. You can see why she did in retrospect now. Uh, she, she knew there were things that were going to come out in the later part of the campaign in mm. advance uh, that would raise this issue, which suggests there's some links between those who, who went into the National Party conference and, and the Prime Minister's office. Of oh, some sort. Come on. Well, and, and the other, the I other element. The left had the monopoly and the, on conspiracy no, no, I mean, they, they've, they've clearly known about, you know, they've known about this for some time. They also knew um, quite clearly the Prime Minister has known for some time about Mike Williams' so-called crusade, where he's been going around with Trevor Mellor for 18 months saying, we've got the H-bomb, the neutron bomb. Yeah, but so, so they've always... That's Mike. So the, the election, the election strategy... As president of the, the Labour Party. The Labour Party's, the Labor Party's election, the Labor Party's election no, no, strategy no, has always been about... To stand this, um, Matthew, Mike Williams was on a hiding to nothing in terms of being able to be re-elected as president. Uh, he, he had a wonderful election in 2005. He's Helen Clark's best friend. Everybody... No, he's not actually. <laughs> it's a long-standing friend. But everybody says ministers. what a wonderful job he did in 2005, and it was true. You know, he saved Labour's bacon right at the last minute as those big booths came in. Mike Williams was the hero. He wanted to do something similar this time, you know, because of all the gas that he had And he had the Prime made. Minister's approval. Because he, he was, was using Helen Clark. The, 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 the Prime Minister... Of course approval. the Prime Minister yeah. knew that, that Mike... He was using that Mike was on a crusade. He was course, using taxpayer-funded Of course she knew. ...that he couldn't but, have used but unless he she, had... But um, she wasn't the one who came up with the, with the great mission. She wasn't the one who got obsessed with, you know, sign okay. signatures okay. that looked like so let's John say, Key. Let's say, and Mike okay. came back... Let's, with say, let's, let's, just say Mike, let's say Mike Williams being a total dipstick. Let's just, let's just assume that, right? Well, you can go my, and sit my, in the dipstick my, corner my, of Bill English my, now. My point is this. They've always known that there were... Their strategy has always been that in the last week of the campaign, or last fortnight of the campaign, there would be things where trust would emerge. So it, it, you know, it was planned, all this sort of thing. I think the other element to this is that there's been a global economic crisis. We know that 
We know that firstly the two parties have converged at the centre and they have very similar policy profiles. Whenever one says we've got an idea, the other one says, oh, we agree with that too. Well, just and hold then what you for have, a second and then there what too. You would know, come no, on, Matthew, Chris, come I'll on. let you finish. Then the other oh. thing you have is an economic, um, an economic crisis where it's the John both parties, school. You just keep where both parties, <laughs> where both parties um, know that the finances of the country are much, much worse even than what were in the pre-election economic and fiscal update. So that stopped uh, the two parties from being able to put forward uh, detailed policy. We know we're going to get probably an updated picture of the country's accounts straight after the election. And so whether there's a Labour or a national government, we know that that's actually when they'll reveal their policy agenda. I mean, the, the Prime Minister's explicit about right. this. It'll be in December. Can I respond? So that's why it's about trust. Because right I, really, I really think that, you know, what, what Matthew has done there is he has cleverly you know, painted this picture of the two parties converging in the centre. The fact of the matter is Labour had a whole series of policies which National originally opposed. Mm. You know, the communism by stealth comment mm. proves that. Well, that's convergence. No, no. What's, what's converged, Matthew, is, Matthew uh, is National has converged on Labour, stealing every single yeah, that's policy. Right. Oh. That's not, that's not Labour converging. The, Labour stayed where uh, it's always no, no, been. No, no, no. The Labor, that, I mean, everything you say is true in, a, in the sense that a lot of Labour's policy programme National has adopted. But on the other Damn side... Damn near all of it. On the other side... Um, my, even Michael Cullen has now offered tax cuts. So I think there's been convergence on both sides over the last three years. Isn't it fair enough for them to try and dig dirt? I mean, we've, we've dug all the dirt you can on Hannah Clark over the last nine years. John Key's yeah, no, come in no, relatively no. new. People don't know him. Shouldn't we expect no, to find and, out all the information and the people, we can before we And the we people that dig dirt, in, in a way, um, do a, a public service to some extent um, because the news media is under-resourced, and I'm sure we'll come to that later on. So the, the researchers that the parties employ to, to look into the other side, I guess do a public service in that it's sense. Not, but well, what, I'm, not, I'm not sure yeah. about that, because I think it's absolutely absurd that um, you know researchers who are supposed to spend their time uh, and the taxpayers' money digging into things like education, health, new policies, you know, around foreign affairs. That's what they're there for. They're not there mm. to do the fourth estate's job for them. Well, thanks, I think, yeah. you know, New Zealand has fallen into a very, very dangerous place where you've got gallery journalists who, in a sense, just wait for the Rodney Hydes of this world or the Trevor Mallards of this world to come and give them the stories, to drop them fully formed into their laps so that they can then go and present them as news. Now, that's clearly what Mike Williams was trying to do. Mm. Now, he, he got it wrong. Mm. There was no smoking gun. He had convinced all his, his colleagues that he had it, and then he didn't produce it. And which is why I think Hodgson fell for it. Well, anyway. that's right, yeah. which is why I think, you know, Linda Clark's comments on TV3 last night that perhaps he should have just got on a plane and kept on going and going <laughs> and going was, was the best advice Mike could have taken. But, but I, I mean, I, I just come back to this point. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's wrong and it's dangerous that the political parties have actually taken over the job that investigative journalists should be doing. Well, let's, well, go, let's, let's talk about that because, yeah. you know, we, we have seen... What do you think of the, of the state of the media's coverage of the election? Because what we have seen this time around is two very large media contingents following the two leaders around the country where they go. They wait for the policy to be released. When the policy is released, you know, we all report it and, and away we go. Do you think that the media is letting us down? Well, the media can only do, in a way, despite what Chris has said, what the... The, the politicians offer up. If they don't offer up any policy, the media can't report on policy. So, so there's there's something in that. I think um, they can dig deeper. What about that example of um, of uh, Jennifer Simon's door stopping uh, John Key in the yeah, but, mall, uh, yeah, but there was saying stunning. you're saying one thing to your MPs are saying one thing to farmers, and you're saying a different thing to there. Where was the follow up on that? You'd have to ask that. <laughs> but, I mean, did you see? I think, what we, well, I, think, I think what we get is. There has been a centralisation. You know, I remember going back to 1990, uh, North and South magazine, when it was pretty obvious National was going to win that election, so I don't think this was bias on their part. They featured um, on their cover over the lead-up to that election Ruth Richardson, that wouldn't have won any votes for National, so I'm you know, <laughs> Jenny Shipley, Lockwood Smith, I think John Luxton, obviously Jim Bolton, who were going to be um, the powerful ministers in that new government. And even going back to the mid-90s, there used to be debates on TVNZ with the health spokespeople, with the education mm, spokespeople. Exactly. These sort of things used to happen. They don't anymore, but that's also, I think, a function of centralisation of decision-making power. I mean, we know that the Prime Minister, um, and in any Prime Minister, I'm sure Mr Key will be the same, runs the government um, from afar sometimes through text message from London. 